Hey everyone, so in this episode we're going to look at have a quick look at the sessions before we implement the, the cart. So first thing, we want to go into our UI layer, open the startup uh, file, and before we use MVC, we want to do use session. And in our services, we want to add session as well. Okay, <clears throat> so now that session is, is configured, let's go into pages. Let's go into our product page. And let's add a new action on post. And uh, return. Let's just redirect to, to page. And let's just redirect to index. So let's also just quickly create a test class. And in here, we want a string ID. OK. And let's create a prop. Let's give it a test class. And let's do product test. OK. And let's bind this property. So the, uh, when we do bind property, this is basically essentially we're saying this is the model that we're going to be using for the form. Right now, what we're going to do is say current ID. So this this ID is what we're going to be st storing, try to store in the session. Let's uh, say HTTP context session get string and let's give it a queue of id okay and basically this is how you session id and if you don't enable it in your startup you're not going to be able to use this it's going to it's going to error all the time so <clears throat> uh let's go ahead and try to store it something is uh, let's try to store this id so set string and use the same key and the value that we're going to store is product test .id. okay so let's put a breakpoint here and let's go into our page and create a form you don't need the action <clears throat> and let's wrap this select in the form. Let's create a button, submit, and let's give it a type of submit as well. Okay, and the select one, the, the select field, we want to make it ASP for product test ID, right? So this ID value is going to get bound by, to the product test ID. So when we, when we submit this form, it's going to hit this method and product ID test is going, going to be populated. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to actually open up uh, Internet Explorer alongside this to help test. Go into the cookies. Okay, so let's grab this URL. Let's delete all the cookies here. Actually, there are no cookies. Okay, great. Slugs accept. And now we do have a cookie. Okay, great. So let's open up developer tools here as well. Okay, cool. All right, so essentially what a session is, is the application stores some data about the user, but since we don't authenticate any users, we don't have an authentication session. So the way that you would uh, match this against a specific user that's on the browser is a session cookie. So what a session cookie is, basically the server is going to give an ID to the browser. As long as that cookie exists in that browser, the server knows what information is stored for that user. So let's go ahead and see this working. So let's uh, add a, what's it called? Uh, An ID to the session, and uh, the IDs that we have is one, five, and six. All right. 
So when we add a small, we expect a one. When we add a large, let's expect let's we expect a five. So let's just work with these two for now. So we submit a small. Current ID is null. That's correct because we didn't set anything. And the bound ID is one. Okay, because we submitted a small one. So let's run this. And now you can see that we actually have a session cookie here. All right, and this value here corresponds to the ID that can access the data storage on the server side. Okay, if we go to Internet Explorer and we refresh here, and we look at the cookies, right? This Internet Explorer window is a different session. So even though it's the same computer, it's two different windows. So essentially, you're two different users on the same machine. And this session cookie ID is not shared with the Internet Explorer. So if we go take this product and we add a medium, which will be actually, let's add a large, uh, which will be a five, right? The current ID will be null still. The current ID is null. ID that we're passing is five. Cool. So if we go again and we submit a small one this time, we're, we're going to expect five. Actually, let's quickly take a look at the cookies. And you can see that this is very small window, but let me full screen this. Can't remember this. I can. All right. Uh, you see, I speed up my core session, and this value here corresponds to the session for this Internet Explorer window. So let's add a small one this time. So what we're expecting is the current ID to be five. Uh, actually, let's add a medium. Current ID will be 5, and the new one will be 6. Current ID is 5. New one is 6. Okay. And now if we add it from the Google Chrome side, let's add a large. So on our Internet Explorer 1, the current one is 6. And on our Chrome, it's 1. So let's add a large. So we're expecting to see a 1. There it is. And we're passing in a 5. So you can see that basically the information is stored for two different browsers, uh, for two browsers differently. So one thing that what's going to happen though, let's copy this URL again, and let's, if you pay attention to the keys, we're going to close Internet Explorer. We're going to open it up again. Okay, and now let's add a small one, and you will see that the current ID is null, but we did start. So what happened? So uh, let's open and close it again. So when we close the browser, what happened is the cookie got cleared. So why did that happen? So again, if we quickly add it, create a cookie. Okay, there it is. You can see that the expiration time is set to session. So basically, uh, we'll probably be able better to see it in Internet Explorer. It will make more sense. Okay, so you can see that the session expires and max age sort of in the past. Basically, as soon as you close the browser, cookie is going to get cleared. Okay, so the way we will go about doing this is let's close, let's stop our application. Go into our session and let's add some options. Options, cookie, name. Let's give it a name of card, All right? Because we're going to be using session to store our card. Since we're not going to necessarily have a registered user, but we still want to know what the user that visited our site sort of put in his card if he comes back and he buys it. Okay, so options, cookie, and want to say max age. Let's take time span, dot from days, and uh, let's set it to a 365, let's set it to a year. Okay, so let's run our application. And let's take a look at our Internet Explorer one. Let's refresh. Actually, first we'll take a look at a Google Chrome, a good browser. Uh, let's add something. Okay, 
and now we can see that the card max age has changed and we, we get a more of a descriptive uh, uh, name for our session so we can we know that this id this value here represents basically points of memory in our application to where the uh, the information for the card is stored and essentially if we add a small so it's a null at this point we take the address close it open up the browser again and uh, submit it. we retain the current id and we only receive the cookie if um what's it called uh, if we get a response back so if we open it up again let's open up our cookies and you can see that it's still there and when we close the browser browser doesn't get rid of our cookies because it now has an expiration time so it's more of a persistent cookie at this point okay so uh, hopefully that made sense and you get a, get a get more of a clear idea of how uh, sessions work and uh, how to manipulate them we're gonna have in the next episode we're gonna implement cart functionality using these sessions so if you didn't quite get it this time uh, in this episode in the next episode you're gonna get, actually get a little bit more practice in storing complete objects in the session and retrieving it and uh, all the good jazz yeah if you enjoyed this uh, episode uh, like subscribe uh, leave a comment as always if you have any questions and uh, see you in the next episode